Hi, welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut a mortise and tenon joint by hand. There's three basic steps that we're going to cover. The layout, how to cut the mortise, and then how to cut the tenon. Stick with me and we'll walk through each one of them in detail. To get started, the first thing you're going to do with the layout is determine where, which sides are going to be your reference face. In this example that we're doing, I've got two different thickness boards and I want the back of each of the boards to be even and have an offset in the front. So I've identified with an R on this one and I've got a piece of tape here so I never forget which side is my reference side. So whenever I'm doing my marking, I'm always going to mark from that side. Once you do that, the next step is to determine the thickness of the tenon that you want to create. So typically, you want your tenon to be about a third the thickness of your board. In this case, my board's one inch thick. I've determined I'm going to use a 3 8 inch tenon, which gives me about a 5 16 shoulder on each side, which is plenty strong for a, a, a mortise and tenon joint this size. So next I'm going to determine where I want to set my marking gauge to make the mark to cut out the mortise. So we determined we were going to use a 3 8 thick chisel and a 5 16 wall, which gives us approximately 11 16 As long as you're using the reference face, if you're close, that, that'll be good enough. So I've got my, my marking gauge set at 11 16 and then I'm going to go, I've already pre-marked where I want my mortise to be cut. I'm going to do a four inch mortise and I'm going to lightly move this across to create that mark. You're better to use several light passes than to try and do one thick pass. This way you have better control over the marking gauge. And then these wheels are nice because you can roll to the end. Now there'll be a shoulder covering part of this so if you go a little over there's no need to panic. Next, we're going to set up the marking gauge to lay out where the tenon is going to be on the other board. So to get started, the first thing I did is I set up my, my second marking gauge for the two marks to be the same width as my chisel. So that, that'll be how wide my tenon will be. And then the next step was to align the face of my marking gauge with the face of this so that the furthest pin is aligned with that line. So hopefully you guys can see this, but I set this up so the face is there. So now I'll make this mark basically on the other board. Before you mark up the board to lay out your tenon, ensure that the board is square. I always check to make sure it's square because as you're running the chisel around, around the board, if it's not square all around, your lines won't line up when they, they connect on the far side. So make sure that you do that first. And then I'm going with an inch and a quarter tenon. So I preset my marking gauge for inch and a quarter. And I'm going to go around all four sides of this board to make a line. And this will be the first step for laying out the tenon itself. Make sure you're using light passes. As we said before, several light passes are better. Now that we have our line all the way around, we know how deep to go on this side with the marking gauge and this side. And making sure that you're using the marking gauge against the reference face, in this case, this is my reference face, lightly start to make your marks. Hopefully you guys can see those marks. I'll try and give you a better, better view. One last step that I did off camera to prepare for cutting the mortise, and I'll put a picture up here so you can see, but I've cut these little perpendicular lines to my mark that I have here. That'll help me uh, position the chisel so that I'm cutting my mortise straight. So some people put two gauge lines. I do one gauge line and I just make sure that my chisel is perpendicular, and if so, you'll want it with a straight mortise. So to get started, the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll come in, like one of the tick marks in from my final edge, and I'll get my chisel lined up. Now, it's really important to try and look down 
the workpiece this way because you can have the chisel can go back and forth without any problem like it's not going to be that critical but if you start angling your chisel from left to right you're you're not going to get a straight um, sidewalls within the mortise and the sidewalls of the mortise and the tenon is where you're going to get your glue strength when you glue this together so it's really important to make sure that your your, your chisel is straight up and down with those marks so to get started I'm just going to make one little starter mark about a tick mark or so from the very end because one of the things you'll you'll notice is as you drive the chisel down because of this wedge, it's going to want to push the chisel back into your workpiece. So you start lightly, and then you move the chisel forward a little bit. And with each successive uh, strike, the goal is to go a little deeper and a little deeper. And hardwood, sometimes it takes a little while to get to depth. You'll notice I put uh, a mark on my chisel. That's how far I have to go. That's the inch and a quarter mark. So I just use the Sharpie marker and put that so I know when I'm at depth. And then you might have to do this a couple of times, but the, the goal is to get to depth as quickly as you can without overdoing it. Once you start getting some of the chunks out, the chisel will go in a little easier because there'll be less resistance on the back end. Now I'll turn it around and I'll clean this up because there's a little, very little resistance. You can almost undercut this a little bit. And now I got to go back and go back to my original. So this is where I was not at depth of cut. So I'll find out where I'm at depth of cut here and then I'll start working my way back. And that's how you cut your mortise. Now that the mortise is cut, we're going to turn our attention to the third step, which is cutting the tenon. I like to, before I start cutting this, I like to take a, go, take a chisel and just go right up to the marking line, just a hair, and give myself just a little bit of a, a groove or a channel for the saw to get put in. When it comes to what type of saw to use, I would use a rip saw, something with aggressive teeth. Uh, I think this has somewhere around 12 teeth per inch. And something that's backed like this to keep the saw from flexing. You might have a tendency to want to lean towards one of these. The problem with this is it's going to be tough to keep this thing over a long cut like that from like wandering on you. So these Japanese saws, while they've got their place, this isn't it. So I would definitely not use one of those. And then... The way I would start the cut is I would do an angle this way, which we'll do. Then we're going to move the board into another angle and cut out the center so that we can stay on our lines. Side. 
All right, for this cut, I'm gonna use a 15 tooth cross cut saw. And I'm gonna go slow on this because I don't want the saw to skip over and mar this piece at all. I cut the trough in here like I did on the top of the other piece. So we'll go here and we'll uh, put our, we'll go slow. Now that we've got the tenon cut to thickness, the next step is to mark how long it's gonna be. So I'm gonna line it up with my marks on my workpiece here. And I'm gonna make two marks that indicate where the mortise begins and ends. And then I'll cut down these pieces and get rid of this. To clean up the shoulder, I use a small chisel and set it in the gauge line and pare back any excess wood. Be sure to take little bites at it so that you have good control and work your way all the way around the shoulder and clean it up. It's okay to undercut, but don't cut the shoulder. So now that we have the edges cleaned up, let's try a dry fit. And as you can see, it's a little snug. So we'll take it out and do some fine tuning. You can tell right here that it's got some, I don't know if you can see that, some like shiny spots so you can see where it was rubbing. Same on this side. So we'll set up the router plane and show you how to fine tune this with a router plane real quick. So to set this up, we'll loosen this. Let this go down just a hair. Okay, let's see how the fit works. Okay, a couple tweaks. We got us a perfect fit. So that's how you cut a mortise and tenon by hand. There's something I just love about using hand tools and, and doing something like that to keep honing my skills. Just the pride level is just a little bit higher. Sometimes it's not perfect, but that's okay. Uh, just keep practicing and you'll get better. 
If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll keep bringing more videos to you.